What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Red Sea Radio. My name is Corbin. While the Red Sox right now have derailed their train and are headed straight towards a cliff, and trust me, we are gonna talk about the state of the Red Sox and this Tampa series probably tomorrow. We shouldn't do the same thing here at Red Sea Radio. We are gonna stay the course because recently we have been talking about trade predictions at this deadline. We have been talking about starting pitching. We've got our top line, top three guys that I wanna see on the Red Sox come to the trade deadline. So if you wanna take a look at those, they are on a playlist on my channel channel but today what we are going to focus on is relief pitching we're going to talk about some relievers that i could see the red sox targeting at the deadline we're going to talk about who they are where they fit in with this red sox team how much it'll cost to get them and we're going to talk about whether or not i believe that the red sox are going to prioritize relief pitching at the trade deadline but before we get into that do me a favor make sure you guys hit that subscribe button if you haven't already if you're new here we talk red sox content almost every single day also make sure you guys are hitting the like button on these videos it helps these videos out a ton and if you want to do me a huge favor, share with a friend or family member who loves the Red Sox as much as you do. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one. Let's get into it. The Red Sox bullpen has been one of the worst in the league the entire year. They have almost the top of blown saves. They have so many blown saves right now that I think Red Sox fans at this point are just numb to the fact that the bullpen's going to give up games and give up games in the worst way. How many times this year have we been down to two outs in an inning and then all of a sudden we're down by three runs out of nowhere? And a lot of that has to do with our bullpen help that we put together in the offseason. And that's on Hein Bloom. But Hein Bloom also has the opportunity to change that going into the second half of the season and going into a pivotal part of this year. So let's talk about some of the guys that the Red Sox could bring on. The first guy I want to talk about is Daniel Bard. I don't know if Daniel Bard really needs an introduction on this channel, but if you don't know who Daniel Bard is, Daniel Bard actually came up with the Red Sox. He was a great pitcher for the Red Sox, ran into some mental roadblocks and some mental issues and didn't exactly go well in Boston, but he reestablished himself in Colorado and is now a fantastic pitcher. He's in the closer type role for the Rockies and currently he has an ERA of 208, boasting a 228 ERA plus, a number well above average. And most importantly, the statistic that I am looking at is 27 games finished for the Rockies. I don't think there's a Red Sox player on this team who's even close to that number at this point. And having a guy who consistently shut down games and having a guy who consistently came into late innings would be huge for this Red Sox bullpen. Right now, you've got Tanner Houck manning the ninth, who's actually done a fairly decent job. We've got Whitlock coming back who pitches really well in high leverage situations but a lot of these games that we're seeing are being lost in the seventh, the sixth, the eighth inning and Daniel Bard could fit into that seventh, eighth inning role really well and complement John Schreiber really well. So Daniel Bard in my opinion would fit in great with this Red Sox team. The cost to get Daniel Bard would actually not be as expensive as some of the other players we could talk about and the reason for that is because Daniel Bard is older. He's on a one-year deal worth three million dollars which means that he's going to be more of a rental option option than a long-term option. So the cost to get him will be lower than say a David Bednar, or Scott Barlow, one of these guys who aren't free agents for a while. I'm thinking a package for Daniel Bard would look something like a couple lower end prospects or one singular higher end prospect. And by higher, I don't even mean your top 10, 15 guys. A guy like Jeter Downs could fit great in with Colorado and a straight trade for him to get Daniel Bard back, in my opinion, would be worth it. I'm not entirely sure if that's the cost that it would be, but I'm thinking somewhere along those lines. At the very least, the Red Sox could also go to top 50 prospects in the Red Sox system to get Daniel Bard, and that really wouldn't decimate anything. So Daniel Bard, a realistic option, a guy who could fit in really well with this Red Sox team. The second guy I want to talk about is David Robertson. Here's another guy who, like Daniel Bard, was a great pitcher coming up, had a little bit of a rough stretch, and has now reinvented himself for the Chicago Cubs. He's been a great late inning option for the Cubs this year with an ERA of 2.10, an ERA plus of 204, and the one thing that I really like about David Robertson and Daniel Bard is their veteran leadership. Right now, this Red Sox bullpen, all their key guys are young. Daniel Schreiber. What did he say? Young. Tanner Houck. Young. Garrett Woodlock when he comes back, young. All these guys who have been are pretty much staples in the bullpen have been young pre-arbitration guys. And David Robertson and Daniel Bard are guys who can come in with that veteran leadership that the Red Sox seem to be lacking in the bullpen late. And not only that, but David Robertson also has a lot of finished games as well, which is another guy who would slot in really well, even in that ninth inning role and give the seventh, eighth inning to Whitlock, Houck, and Schreiber. To me, that's a pretty deadly combination. So David Robertson makes sense to me on this Red Sox team in terms of 
of where he would fit in. As for the cost to get him, he would probably cost a little bit more than Daniel Bard, but just about the same, right? Maybe instead of giving up one low end prospect for Daniel Bard, you're giving up two for David Robertson. Jeter Downs, the guy I mentioned for Daniel Bard. David Robertson, it makes a ton of sense considering how poorly the Cubs middle infield has been this year. Nick Madrigal is having one of, if not the worst seasons of his career. And so a straight trade Jeter Downs for David Robertson could be a possibility going into the deadline. The last guy I want to talk about is Michael Fulmer, the setup guy for the Detroit Tigers. And I know, I know. Corbin, what are we doing? If we're talking about the Detroit Tigers, why wouldn't we go after Gregory Soto, the all-star closing pitcher for the Detroit Tigers? Well, the reason I picked Fulmer instead of Soto is because Fulmer is a right-handed pitcher with so many lefties in this Red Sox bullpen. You're talking Strom, you're talking Diekman, you're talking Davis, you've got Josh Taylor on the way. You don't want to have too many lefties in that pen and end up with matchup issues going towards the postseason. So in my opinion, Michael Fulmer makes sense. The other reason Michael Fulmer makes sense is because of what we've kind of been talking about this entire video, right? The Red Sox have had problems in the ninth, but it's not as bad, especially now that Houck started to man that position as the sixth, seventh, and eighth inning are. And Michael Fulmer has been doing the sixth, seventh, and eighth inning setup role for the Detroit Tigers all year, and he's been doing it really well. Right now, he has an ERA of 1.89, an ERA plus of 206, way above the average. And again, this is important because he's a setup guy who we have been lacking all year. Michael Fulmer could slot into that role, again, pair really nicely with John Schreiber and create sort of a wall in between the seventh, eighth inning, and then you put in how can the ninth and see what happens. Michael Fulmer, like the other two, would it be super expensive to get? He, like the other two, is on a one-year deal worth $4.5 million. So he's a little bit more expensive, and I don't know if the Red Sox are going to want to take on that much salary at the deadline. If they want to win, they will, but I will talk about that in a second. To get Fulmer, you're probably looking at around the same package that it would take to get Robertson or Daniel Bard. Again, this is another this is another team that could use Jeter Downs as well. You're looking at a middle infield of Javi Baez and Jonathan Scope. Jonathan Scope is having a little bit of a rough year and he's more of a DH caliber player anyways. So maybe Jeter Downs is a viable option for the Detroit Tigers as well. Either way, not super expensive to get any singular one of these guys. And like I said at the beginning of the video, there is no lacking of decent relief relief pitching in the MLB anywhere. I think every single team in the MLB has a relief pitcher that they'd be willing to part with for the right price. The question is whether or not the Red Sox are going to make relief pitching a deadline priority. And in my opinion, they have to. As much as we want the starting pitching, as much as we want the first base, it doesn't really matter how well the offense or starting pitching does. If the bullpen's gonna come in every single day and give up three, four runs, if they're gonna make bonehead mistakes and give a team the lead, right? It doesn't matter how good we make our team if we can't finish games off. So in my opinion, relief pitching has to be the priority come the deadline. And I do genuinely think it will be. And I think these guys are legitimate options. The Red Sox probably won't go after a David Bednar, a guy who's under control for while who's going to cost a ton but one of these guys who's been doing really well and is kind of flying under the radar could be a legitimate option for this bullpen but there again like I said so many times there are so many different options so let me know in the comment section down below what you think of these three guys if you had to choose one which one would it be and why also I'm sure you guys have a player that I didn't name that you're like Corbin what are you doing this guy needs to be on the Red Sox let me know who that guy is down below as well let me know all your thoughts regarding relief pitching for the Red Sox down below because I know it's not going to be pretty. If you made it to the end of this video, do me a favor. Make sure you've hit that subscribe button. You made it to the end. You clearly enjoy the content. You might as well subscribe. Same thing with the like button. It helps these videos out a ton. And if you liked it, you might as well like it. Also, if you could do me a huge favor and share this with a friend or family member who loves the Red Sox as much as you do so they have an idea of who the Red Sox might be targeting at the deadline as well, that would mean a lot to me. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one, and I will see you in the red seats.